Okay, science time. Uh, we, the objective is describe and model the effects of forces, which is not what this says. Although I think that one was better, but that's okay. Describe the, and model the effects of forces. I dropped my cloth. Describe and model the effects of forces. Okay, here's a side note. What's the difference between effect with an E and affect with an A? Does anyone know? Because you see both of those sometimes, or at least I hope you see both of those sometimes. Effect generally, not always. That one that one's quite a bit more variable, but effect is generally a noun, like the effect of my eating that cheeseburger was that I threw up all night. That would be, that. that's a noun, the effect. That's a thing that happened, an event, the effect. And whereas affect, or affect is how we normally say it, affect is a verb. So I, I um, affected Ellie by stealing her notebook from her. That would be, that would affect her. That's a verb, like to change something. Anyway, uh, now you know something about English. Let's talk about forces instead, because that's my actual job. Um, what color should we use? Okay. We're talking about Newton's, oh, this, I don't know, laws of motion. Who is Newton? Oh, Isaac Newton. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of his first name. We're going to have to really definitely change the color because that barely shows up. Yeah. Um, it's a little better. Uh, hey, guess what? what? Thank you. Um, if you if you are having a hard time either, oh, that's supposed to be an S, reading my handwriting, which I'm making it a lot worse now. This is making it a lot more difficult to read. But if you're having a hard time reading what's up here, where else can you find this information that isn't written by someone with a, yeah, you can look in your exploration. Yeah, this is the same, uh, maybe not the same as what's in your book, but if you're having a hard time reading my handwriting, please look in your book. I will, there are, your explorations have this text there within that is written by a machine, and you can read that pretty easily. Uh, furthermore, if I'm, if you're having a hard time understanding what I'm saying, what could you do later? Yeah, watch the video and slow it down, and, and then you can even put the captions on, and that will be a way for you to write what I'm saying. The captions do a really good job, I think. It annoys me how much, when I'm watching it, um, I just did it, that I say, um, and the captions pick that up, and then there's just like one little block that says, um, and it makes me feel like a moron, but uh, I can't help it. I'm, I'm just trying to think sometimes. Anyway, let's talk about, so Newton's laws of motion. First of all, as we, as we like to do, let's define the word motion. What is that? Okay, movement. Movement. Yes, I like that one better. I, I know you, I can tell by the way you said it that you just um, read it right out of the book. But that one, that one is generally the one we agree on in physics. Change in position. Now let's thus define position. What is position? Oh. Okay. Yeah, where an object is from a reference point. Um, and we need three things. Actually, I'm going to three little arrows. We need three things to describe position accurately. Here's an inaccurate way to describe position. If I say, hey, could you give me my pencil, please? And, and you go to get it, and you say, where is it? And I say, over there. Too vague, too vague. It might not be too vague. If you see the pencil, that might be OK. Or if your mom's asking you if you could pick some apples out at Walmart, and you say, where are they? And she says, they're, they're over there. And she just kind of indicates broadly a direction. But she is even doing that. So that gives us one hint as to what we need to describe a position accurately. That's not super accurate, but what do we need to describe a position, at least to some extent? Direction. A direction. Over there is a direction. It's vague and not a very good one, but that is a direction. If we're being more specific in science, we might say north or right or up. Those are all directions. Over there, though, that does indicate direction. It would make a big difference when if I say, give me a pencil, and I say over there versus over there. You'd look in two completely different places. Also, that one would be a lie, so don't do that. Um, what else do we need to describe a position accurately? Yes, but that'll be, that'll be within the next 
thing. Like, if I, if I was going to, if you, for instance, if I was describing to a computer who didn't have the same kind of problem-solving abilities that you do, if I, if there was a, if, if, for instance, if my gorilla here were computerized gorilla and I had to give it very specific instructions and I was asking it to get me my pencil and I said, get my pencil over there and it just kept walking in that direction forever, bumping into stuff, it would never get my pencil. I have to describe pos position specifically by telling it a specific direction. So for me, I might say uh, northwest, northeast, I would say northeast. And I would also have to say what? Otherwise, they're just going northeast for a, for a, in a straight line forever. I'd have to say a direction. direction. You already said that, though. Uh, distance. distance. Yeah, I'd have to say a distance. So I might tell the monkey, two and a half meters northwest of here. I need a distance. But I also need a reference point. And I gave one just now. Two and a half meters, monkey. Two and a half meters northeast of... Yeah, of a reference point, of a reference point. In this case, in this case, I'm saying of here, of where we are now, compared to where we are now, because that would make a difference, wouldn't it? If I, was, if I wanted my pencil, and I was telling my monkey to get me a pencil, and I was on a football field, I'd give him a whole separate set of instructions from here, which here would be there. But I need a reference point. So usually, if your mom says the apples are over there, what is she using as a reference point implying? With, yeah, her hand, herself, where we are now. Compared to where we are now, Compared to where we are now, that's the reference point. It's not always where we are now, but a reference point is a comparison that we make for position. So we need a direction, a distance, and a reference point. So to accurately describe position, where are my uh, skulls of the Dia de los Muertos? Accurately describe that, please. O okay, on. That's kind of like a direction. The Promethean board. That's, that's definitely... Okay, on the right side of the Promethean board. So we have a direction, right side. We have a distance kind of on, I mean, that's a preposition, but it kind of tells us where they're at, and a reference point, the Promethean board. Let's do it a different way. Um, relative, let's use uh, Tommy's forehead as the reference point. Describe the position of the Dia de los Muertos skulls. That way doesn't cut it. That is a direction. What is that way? Yeah, this is north. Sorry, my monkey was supposed to be traveling southeast this whole time. I'm, forgive me. North. That is north. Well, we'll just say north. I try to use. I picked Tommy because she's, in my mind, at least directly south. I can see now that she isn't exactly. But north of Tommy, that's the reference point. Tommy's forehead is the reference point. North is the direction. What else do we need? Ten feet. I don't like that. It's more like, let's say, two and a half meters again. So we need a distance to accurately describe position. And then if this position, which we can describe in this way, changes, we call that movement. Close your eyes. Do it now. Everyone close your eyes. Sage, you did not... <laughs> you didn't have your eyes closed. Okay, now open your eyes. <gasps> Where's the gorilla? It's a magic trick. Where's the gorilla? Where's the gorilla? It's, o it's over there. Yeah, it's over there. W what changed? It's position changed, and I know that it moved. Did you see it move? You weren't supposed to, Sage. You weren't supposed to actually be able to see it move. That's why I have you close your eyes. But it's, it's position changed, and so you know instinctively, like on a, on a reptile level, you know that movement occurred. If something is in a different spot from where it was the last time you found it, that's a change in position, and your reptile brain even understands that that is movement. That's movement. Movement is change in position. Motion is change in position. That's how we. That's how we discern. You don't have to. You don't have to physically witness something in motion in order to say that it moved, right? You can just say you can see this position change, and that is good enough. That is that tells you motion. How do we measure motion in science? How do we measure motion? Yeah, him says miles per hour. That's how you. That's how you measure how what something is going fast. So we measure its speed. Speed acceleration. Yes, yeah, speed acceleration and velocity. We're going to talk about speed first. Speed, and we'll do the math for this uh, certainly much, much more involved next year. In fact, the physical science boys just finished taking a test over speed, velocity, and acceleration. But the math equation, the, the, the equation really is a speed equals distance divided by time. Speed equals distance divided by time. And we're not going to do math with this in this class, not very much anyway. But what we are going to do, I want you to know this so that you can see that speed 
is a comparison of distance and time. It compares how far something went to how long it took to go that far. That's what speed is. How do we measure speed? Well, something like 65 miles per hour. I'm going to write this a different way. 65 miles per hour. Per is what mathematical operation? Division. Division. So I went, this is telling me that if I traveled for one hour, I will have gone 65 miles. It's comparing a distance and a time. That's what speed does, compares distance and time. Speed is a comparison, write it down. Speed is a comparison of distance and time. And the mathematical specifically, it divides distance by time. It's a division of distance by time that we measure in units of distance units, like miles, per time units. Like ours. You see that? Do you see if we divide a distance by a time, our unit becomes a distance unit divided by a time unit? Is centimeters per second a valid speed unit? Yes. yes. Is light years per century a valid distance unit? Yeah, it is actually. Well, light years is a distance unit. People get confused about that. But light years per century is a valid speed unit. Any distance unit divided by any time unit is speed. Um, let's say Miranda can run around the block five times in half an hour. That's a speed. Five times around the block is really a distance, right? That's really a distance. That's telling you how many times around this little circle of block she went, divided by a time, half an hour, right? That's a speed unit. Does that make sense? How is velocity different from that? You should know this um, from your explorations. How is velocity different? Velocity has a specific direction. Sp velocity has a specific direction. Do you remember we talked about how, and we had talked about this before, but we talked about how acceleration, a change in uh, acceleration was a change in motion. Remember that? And acceleration was described as either an increase in speed, a decrease in speed, or a change in direction. You remember talking about that? So we've been over these things before, but velocity here as a review is a uh, speed in a certain direction. So it's calculated the same way, except now it's V with an arrow over it to indicate that it has a direction, is distance divided by time. Actually, what we usually say is it's displacement divided by time. Displacement is directional as well. And this, this is review. We had talked about this before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What causes, what causes change in either of these? Remember, these measure motion. So what causes change in motion? Or what, what do we call a change in motion? Forces. No. That, that's the answer to the first question, but I changed it. What do, what do we call a change in motion? Change in motion, you should remember this, is, someone say it. Say it again, louder. Position. No. Change in motion is? No. Change in position was motion. Change in motion is, we talked about this in the last chapter, acceleration. In fact, I just talked about it again, but acceleration. I need to change colors because this one is completely invisible on screen. Let's try pink. Change in motion is acceleration. Okay. That's better. I really should have erased that first. Change in motion is acceleration. And what are the three ways an object can accelerate? No, no, no. Well, yes, but there's two of those in there. Doing what with its speed? And Faster, slower, I would say. Increase in speed, decrease in speed, or the one people forget the most often is change in direction. Change in direction. Those are types of acceleration. The ways an object was not accelerating were staying still and constant speed in a straight line. Change in motion is acceleration. And now, here's the last part of this concept map before we move on to a different thing. What causes, caused by, affected, as we talked about earlier, affected by, Here's your, here's your chance. No. Well, yes, but more broadly. No. Broader. Say it, Garrett. Acceleration is caused by? N no. No. Force. Thank you. Who was it? Force. Force. Specifically a net force. Remember we talked about balanced and unbalanced forces? So we have here, position is described like this. A change in position is motion. A change in motion is acceleration, and that is caused by a net force, by an unbalanced force. 
If the forces are balanced, if the only balanced forces exist, exist on an object, is it, is it accelerating? No. So is its motion changing? No. Can it still have motion? Yes, but its motion is not changing. Are you, are you writing all this down? Are you writing all this down? Now we describe forces. And, we, and now we describe forces using Newton's laws of motion, which is what we set out to do from the beginning. Newton has three very basic laws of movement, of motion. Newton's, ha Newton's three laws of motion. We're going to write them down. You've already heard them, so we're gonna, I'm going to have you recite them, and then we're going to talk about them a little bit more in depth. Newton's first law of motion is... An object in motion stays uh, stays in motion, and An object in motion stays in motion, and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. In one word, please, that your book had talked about, what's the one word that we use to describe moons? No. Thank you. Inertia. Inertia, I feel like I've talked to you about this before. Inertia is the Latin word for laziness. Remember we talked, I think, that, was that you I talked to this about? It's hard at the beginning of the year because I t say the exact same thing to the freshmen for the whole first like three months of the year. Inertia is the Latin word for laziness. Like if you look at a list of the seven deadly sins in Latin, inertia is one of them, being lazy. Uh, but in this context, it means that an object does not change its motion on its own. You have to, you have to apply a net force to it. Yeah, we did talk about this, because I had the chair here, and I pushed it, and I said, well, why does it, Newton's first law says it, it will keep going forever. Why doesn't it? And you said, right, yeah, because of friction, which we talked about. So I know we talked about that before. Let's move on to Newton's second law. I know we've talked about this before. If you need a refresher, which you clearly do, some of you, watch the other video from last time. Newton's second law is that, okay, well, you just did your explorations, didn't you? No, there's not one about gravity. Newton does have a law of universal gravitation that we talked about last time. This is the acceleration one. And there is no friction one, so this is the acceleration one. The acceleration one. An object's acceleration is determined by force and mass and is in the same direction, I should put by net force and mass, in the same direction as the net force. We sum this one up in this way, F net, net force, so far so good, net force equals mass times acceleration. Yeah, I remember writing that down. I have that down. From your explorations? Yeah. This is this is probably the most important, um, the most fundamental equation in all of mechanics. Uh, net force is equal to an object's mass times acceleration, and this relates back to inertia, because the more mass an object has, the more inertia it has. So the more mass it has, the larger net force is needed to cause the same acceleration. An object's acceleration is determined by net force and mass, and is in the same direction as the net force. If I make mass bigger here, and think about this uh, in, in the equation, if I make mass bigger and I want acceleration to stay the same, what do I have to do to the net force? Make it bigger too. I have to make it bigger too. I have to have a larger net force to make the same acceleration if the mass increases. What if I have a set mass and I want to increase its acceleration? What must I do to the net force? I have to increase the net force. They're related in this way mathematically. And then, and then 
Yep, and you can manipulate this, Gary says, is into acceleration equals, whoops, that's not really the right way to do it, net force divided by mass. These are the same equation. These are the same equation. They want, this one's just manipulated to have acceleration isolated, and this one's manipulated to have force isolated. You can do it with mass too. And then lastly, Newton's third law. Tell me Newton's third law. You know this one. I know you do. Yep. For every action, there is, say the rest, equal and opposite reaction. Every action. That, that is not used lightly. Every single action in the universe has an equal and opposite reaction. If I push on the whiteboard, what's the rest? Yeah, it pushes back. If I push on the whiteboard, it pushes back. If I, if I rub my right hand against my left hand, see the rest. My left hand rubs back against my right hand. There is always. Now listen, here's where, here's where people get confused. If I, if I drop this marker, pretend I dropped it and it's falling. What's pulling it towards Earth? Earth's gravity is pulling the marker towards it. But listen, the marker's gravity is also pulling Earth towards it. I'm going to write this, true for gravity 2. No, Mr. Kahn, I don't believe you. Why? It doesn't seem like it. If I drop the marker, we didn't notice Earth come up to meet it. But that does happen. Newton's law says that has to happen. So we've just disproved Newton's third law, right? No, wrong. It's, it's true, for, true for gravity 2. 2, also. As well as. It's also true for gravity. So if this is true, if, if technically, and, and it is true, the Earth is also attracted to the marker, why don't we see a, a, a movement of the Earth? Yes, exactly right, because of this. Because of F equals MA. So look at this. We have the exact same force. That's what Newton's third law tells us. The exact same force. Force of Earth on... I don't know what's going on in my brain. Earth on marker. And we also have the exact same thing. Force of marker on earth. They, they have the exact same force. I've drawn those the same size. Compare the masses, though. Yeah. Yeah. So the force of the earth on the marker, the marker only has a tiny baby mass. Mass of the marker. The earth has a great big mass. And so, if this is true, and the math is true, what must the acceleration of this one be like to make the force the same? What must the acceleration of the marker be like to make the force the same? Yeah, it has to be a huge acceleration. The acceleration of the marker is enormous compared to the tiny little acceleration of the Earth. Because what we're doing is when we drop this marker, we're not really seeing, we're not seeing the force when they attract each other. We're seeing the acceleration. And because the marker has such a smaller mass, it accelerates much more, much more, much, much more. Does the Earth technically accelerate to see the marker? Yeah, less, less than is measurable, less than the diameter of an electron. It's just that it, it technically does, but very, very, very barely, immeasurably. If we make the objects larger, if we make the moon now instead of a marker, the moon is still smaller than the Earth, but is there a noticeable gravitational effect from the Earth to the moon? Yeah, we call that the tides. Also, they're, they're orbitally locked. They continue to orbit each other. The force of gravity is mutual. All forces are mutual. If you, um, you shouldn't do this, but if you, if you punch a fella, if you, if you punch Garrett in the jaw, his jaw punches you back. Do you feel that on your knuckles? Yeah, that is Newton's third law. If you hit a car, if you hit a bug with your car, is Newton's third law true? Yeah, it's just that the bug, since it's so, so, so much smaller, accelerates a lot more than your car does. Now, scale it up a little. If you hit a deer with your car, there's a much more similar acceleration, right? Because the mass is more similar. It's always true. It's just that sometimes the mass and the acceleration, are, or always, the mass and the acceleration are much different. There can be a huge disparity in those things. Do you have questions about that? 
Newton's third law, it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around sometimes, especially if you're in eighth grade. But do you, do you have questions specifically about Newton's third law? And why we don't always see the forces acting and reacting? Okay. Um, let me make sure there's not anything we missed. You, no one has any questions at all about any of this. We talked about, we reviewed position, motion, velocity, and acceleration. And then we talked about all of Newton's three laws, the first of which was a review. Does anyone have any questions? Look here, here's a girl in a pink shirt. It could be a boy. Here's a person, here's a human being in a pink shirt hitting their hand on the table. Oh no, why does it hurt? The table hit you back, yeah. If you kick football, football kicks you back. You can feel it. You can feel the force going up your leg. If you hit golf ball, the golf ball hits you back. You can sometimes feel it zinging you. Ah. 